And my favorite, my favorite thing about Jesus is in Mark chapter 1. And in Mark chapter 1, Jesus heals a man with leprosy. And he tells this man, don't tell anyone what I just did. And then, in essence, he said, go to the temple, give the offerings according to the law of Moses that the priests tell you to give. That's an interesting thought because if, if I were to heal somebody of the most scary disease of the day, I wouldn't tell them, go to the building that I came to destroy and rebuild in three days and submit to the law that I came to fulfill and listen to the people that are going to hang me on a cross right. and kill me. I would have said the exact opposite. Right. Um, but yet, Jesus did say that. And, and here's the really important piece to what I feel that, that we can take from this is that by Jesus ultimately saying, go to the building I came to destroy and rebuild in three days, submit to the law I came to fulfill, and listen to the people that are going to hang me on a cross, Jesus effectively took the broader worldview and metric of the day that really cared about the law, cared about the building, cared about the priest. He took that and placed it upon himself. Mm. And he's saying, okay, now I know the boundaries that I have to work within mm. in order for something significant to happen in this culture, which is opposite of what we do today. Right. What we do today is we take our world worldview, we place it upon society, and we say these are the boundaries that you need to work within in order for something significant to happen with me. And I just think there's there's uh, again oh. you're saying that regardless of the the viewpoint of the group, we're all doing that. We're trying right. to pull each other toward join my club, yeah. my way, or there's no way to... So why instead, like Jesus, why don't we just step inside the metric that is presented to us? Okay. Doesn't mean we have a lack of conviction. Doesn't mean that we don't have a belief in truth. Doesn't mean that we're sellouts or we're capitulating to any outside agenda. It just means we are who we are in spaces that are not our traditional tribal aspects and understandings. So one of the things that I find uh unique about Jesus and interesting is this is the freedom he lived in and uh, it's why I follow Jesus primarily because I want to be free and and I see in him this capacity to live sort of untethered and mm. uh, not uh, he didn't have to report to people and he didn't he didn't always tell people what he was up to He didn't explain himself all the time. He didn't he wasn't going around qualifying himself, right? Right. right? Yeah, we'd all like that and then he seemed to be know who he was move forward all that kind of stuff So so we tend to think of Jesus and then and you know uh, classically as a religious leader or mm -hmm. part of a religion called Christianity and and uh, And he was a, an observant Jew so and he did the things you just talked about but what you're exploring seems to me to go beyond religion. Mm -hmm. It gets into re what I would just call reality, it yeah, gets into day-to-day yeah. -day life, into culture. So when we start talking about incarnation or these things, this actually means like living inside of culture and living with people, right. living, living our life and authentically, right? Yeah. That's another way to talk about it. And, and uh, so uh, what, is, what is your thinking about, uh, you know, I, I feel like we need to help people uh, reimagine who Jesus is mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. and your work in many ways is a, painting a picture of the possibilities of that does mm -hmm. this does this ring bells for yeah, you? yeah yeah well we're trying number one um, but I am so happy that you said reality that's something I talk about literally all the time in in our daily life so here's what happens in most cultural situations today is that people doesn't matter what people group or population but people have this ideal scenario in their head that they want to see happen that is not yet. And so in this ideal scenario, what they do is that they don't function in reality. They don't look at what's before them. Instead, right. they look to this ideal, ideal. scenario right. and they say, well, well, it's, it, it's going to be this one day, so therefore, this is my reality. This is what I'm going to live in. Right. And this is the reason why, I fully believe this, this is the reason why people get so surprised and why they're so shocked when things go differently than what they planned. Because right. they're not functioning in reality, yeah. they're functioning in their ideal scenario that they're pretending is reality. And so, if we just do away with these ideal scenarios, it doesn't mean, sure, from a Christian perspective, I can't wait for Jesus to come back one day. It's going to be awesome. We're all going to be in heaven. You know, it's, it'll be great. But until that point, why don't we function in reality? And reality is messy. And reality doesn't fit uh, nice little boxes. And reality has antagonists. And reality has people who love you. And they have people who hate you. And people, you know, who are, who are working off all these different understandings. Yeah. And so we will be less surprised as a people, not just Christian people, as right. a people when we actually start to look at reality as truth, as what is 
happening. Doesn't mean it's the capital T truth. Right. Doesn't mean it's a theological truth. It means that reality before us is truth. And so these are the spaces that we need to function in. And we're just trying to recall people back exactly. to reality. This is where, and, and, and Jesus did not tell us to agree with each other. He told us to love each other, mm -hmm. which is a much more complicated thing to do yeah. than even agreeing. Agreeing yeah, yeah. are enough, right? Right. But the idea of practicing love. So with that in mind, just how would you, how would you approach Dan Savage, which, you know, with the idea of actually valuing him and what he has to contribute, and if he were to even consider, like, you know, having a conversation, um, wh wh how, wh what would interest you to talk with him about? Yeah. Well, first off, um, I've I've emailed Dan and right. and I've tried to I've tried to reach out on a number of different occasions. I would love to sit down with that brother. Um, yeah. In fact, I've sat down with with a few of his really good friends. Um, and I know they've talked to him on yeah. on behalf of us as well, and and I've had great times talking to some of his friends, and and um, we we understand each other better. And I and what what I really want to get down to, and if I if he was sitting right here, I would love to say what what is your outcome, what is your best case scenario for world, and what is what is my best case scenario for world, and right. and I promise there's going to be a lot more commonality in that understanding. We might go about it in two different ways, um, but there is a more common understanding and a holistic nature between, uh, between him and I. And, um, and there, there are people from all different shades and people resonate with, with activist bulldogs right. and people resonate with peacemakers and pe you know, and sure. so it's not just one right way. I, I would like to then ask him, uh, you know, about the whole pluralism issue and, sure. and all of that and uh, just get some clarity on those type of things. But from what we have learned, uh, as I said at the beginning, the moment you sit down with somebody, um, they're a lot less threatening and a lot less bold in real life uh, than they are behind a keyboard. And it doesn't matter if it's Dan Savage or myself or, or anybody else, you know, and, and just being in that space, once again, incarnation, yeah. being in that space, there's, there's a sacredness right. in in-person interaction. and. Listen, my my apartment is always open for him and his partner, yep. and uh, and so I just I would love to see that happen one day. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank That's you, good. man. Appreciate it. Good.